Welcome to the N-Track Drums Tutorial, Part 1, Creating and Sequencing Patterns. I'm going to be your guide, Hot Dog Water. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do two distinct things to get you off and running really fast with N-Track Drums. The first of those things is going to be creating your own unique drum patterns. And then second, I'm going to show you how to sequence those patterns together into a song. So let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right in and get going. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a copy of N-Track Drums into the project. So I'm going to go to Add Channel, Add New Instrument Channel, and I'm going to select N-Track Drums. And you can see that brings the program up. Good deal. All right, so uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my kit. And uh, I happen to be a pretty big fan of uh, the Acoustic Live kit down here at the bottom. I think it's got a lot of nice acoustic sounds in it. Kick drum, snare, tom. Nice. All right, so I'm going to move on. I'm going to create some patterns. So I'm going to go up here to the uh, Steps tab on here. And my first pattern is going to be uh, just uh, straight kick drums on uh, the quarter note beats. Uh, you can see here we're set to a uh, step indicator of 16, which basically means that each of these 16 boxes uh, represents a 16th of uh, uh, the measure. Uh, so you can see this is going to be one measure long. I'm going to put a kick drum on the quarter note of each beat. And the next thing I'll need to do is to set the length of this pattern. And you can do this with the length indicator up here at the top. Uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that uh, 16, this is 16 long. I'm going to click the last box and that means that this is going to be one measure long. So now I'm going to play this just to test it out. It should just repeat the kick drum on the quarter notes. Okay, very nice. All right, now to create the second pattern, which is going to be uh, kind of a leading leading into the main pattern, which is going to be a descending tom fill. So I'm going to go to my next pattern, pattern B. Um, actually, I'm going to base this off of the first pattern. So the easiest way to do this would be to uh, right-click on pattern A and do copy to pattern B. Okay, uh, now I switch over to pattern B. You can see it's created an identical copy of pattern A, which is the same length and has the same beats in it. Um, I do want the kick drum to uh, go on uh, beats 1 and 2, uh, but I'm going to get rid of it on beats 3 and 4. I'm going to put a tom fill in its place. So uh, here we go. Tom 2, uh, tom 4, and tom 6. And I think I actually want to end this with a, a little splash symbol, uh, which I don't see in my list over here on the left-hand side. So I'm going to replace something that I don't need with the splash. Uh, I don't plan to use the hi-hat pedal. Um, so I'm going to go drop down, and I'm going to replace that with the splash symbol. And I'm going to put that on the uh, the uh, end of four. I'm going to bring the velocity of this down just a little bit here so it's not uh, quite such a full thing. I'm also going to adjust the velocities of these toms so that they're kind of uh, increasing in volume as we go through them. So let's see here. Uh, 70, 80, 80, 90. 90 and 100. Okay, let's see what that sounds like. Perfect, just what I wanted. Okay, uh, moving on, we're going to go to uh, pattern C, which is going to be my main drum beat for the song. All right, uh, I'm going to go and I'm going to go copy what I've got here in pattern A over to pattern C because I do want the kicks to be on the quarter notes. Uh, let's see here, and I also want to have a snare drum on the two and the four. And let's see here, I think I want to uh, have a kind of a ride cymbal or uh, maybe a closed hi-hat going on. A closed hi-hat would work, so uh, let's just put these on the, on the quarter, eight note beats throughout here. And let's see what that uh, sounds like. Okay, that's pretty cool. The, uh, the hi-hat sounds a little bit loud to me, so I'm going to bring the velocity on those down to maybe about 60 or so. doesn't have to be exact, and uh, that might give it a little bit of a human feel if they're not exactly the same velocity on each one. So I'm just going to try to get them close here. And uh... All right. Perfect. That's just what I want. Okay, and uh, finally for the last one, we're going to do kind of a fill pattern here that will just uh, go off maybe every eight measures or so during the main part of the beat. So I'm going to start with uh, my main beat that's in pattern C, and I'm going to copy that over to pattern B. All right, and uh, let's see. Now I'm just going to maybe kind of change this to have kind of a fill pattern with the snare. So um, And I may change... Uh, 
change these to kind of a kind of a flam kind of sound. So uh, let's see what that sounds like. Okay, good enough. Uh, okay, so we've got our four basic patterns created. The next thing we need to do is figure out how we are going to sequence these together. All right, so I'll move this down out of my way for now. And uh, back here, I'm going to insert a new MIDI track. Uh, you can either do that in Intrack 5 by clicking on the button here, or uh, the other way would be to uh, add a channel, add a new blank track, a new MIDI track. All right, if I do it this way, you can see it automatically brings up the track properties for this. Um, so what I want to do is I want to uh, change the channel, this is the output channel, to be channel 16, which is what Intrack Drums listens to for uh, its control signals. Um, the other thing I want to do is rather than directing the output to uh, the wavetable sample, I'm going to send it to the Intrack Drums plugin. Okay, so I've got my basic information in here and I can now uh, close down the properties box and I'm going to work directly with, uh, with the MIDI track. Uh, if I right click somewhere in the track, I can switch over to the piano roll mode and uh, you can see that this puts me up on a piano. If, if you don't happen to see this piano keyboard over here, you can right click in here um, and it may be set to something like show note numbers or something else, but you can select show piano from here and that'll, that'll switch it over to the piano mode. Uh, C3 is the first controller um, and that's where you want to be, so you know you may need to scroll down to, to find C3. Uh, C3 corresponds to pattern A and as you start to go up, uh, C sharp 3 is pattern B, D3 is pattern C, D sharp 3 is pattern D. Um, okay, so now we need to figure out how we want these to go. So uh, let's see here. We're looking at measures up here at the top. Uh, I'm going to start this with uh, one measure of my kick drums. So I need to switch over to note placement mode. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, drop in pattern A, which corresponds to C right there. And I'm going to drag it all the way to the left as far as I can. So that's the first thing that uh, in track C so that it starts with, uh, with pattern A. Uh, so we'll do one measure of that, and then I'm going to move on to pattern B, which is, corresponds to the C-sharp note. Uh, and what I'm going to do here, you'll, you'll notice that, uh, I'm going to bring back in track drums for a second here. If you go to the uh, preferences, there's a, there's a switch in here, sequence or live mode, wait for end of pattern before switching. And what that means is if, you, if it sees a control event before it gets to the end of that pattern, it's going to go ahead and play that pattern out before it switches to the next one. And I kind of like that mode to be on. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier with the placement of the control messages. You don't have to get them in exactly the right spot. Okay, so uh, knowing that that's on, uh, we can basically place um, place this next control event anywhere inside of the first measure, and then when it gets to the second measure, um, it'll, it'll complete out the first pattern. When it gets to the second measure, it'll, it'll switch to that one. So I'm going to go ahead and place a note anywhere in there. And we'll just play one measure of that, and we'll move on to our main uh, main cadence, which is going to be pattern C. So I'll just place a note here in somewhere in measure two, and when it, it'll complete that pattern B, and when it gets to measure three, it'll switch over to pattern C. So let's give that a test. I'm going to rewind and uh, play. Cool. All right. So let's see. I think I want to do uh, I want to do seven seven measures of. Uh, pattern C, which is my main, and then on the eighth measure, I'm going to switch over to my uh, fill-in, my drum fill. So let's see, I'm going to count here. It starts here in measure three, four, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's a seventh one, and I'm going to place a control event to switch over to my fill on that one, and then uh, somewhere in this measure, I'm going to switch back to the main cadence. All right, uh, the next thing I want to do and uh, kind of scroll out here a little bit so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to play eight more measures of this thing, and then what I want to do is I want to shut the sound off. All right, and the way I'm going to switch the sound off is by moving over to uh, an unused pattern, a pattern with nothing in it, blank, and that'll, that'll shut the sound down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's going to be my eighth one. Uh, so somewhere in there I'm going to go all the way up here to uh, pattern E, which is undefined. I'm going to place a control marker in there so that after it's finished it'll switch off. So let's take a listen. <laughs> 